the different distances. That tells you what it is. Coordination tells you where it is. Peripheral vision tells you where it is in space relative to you. So all these different processing skills of vision can all be trained, they can be improved, and they develop throughout our whole life. And, it, and we train people that are 100 years old to get better vision in these processing problems. So one way of looking at learning and vision defects in terms of reading is these linear skills. The linear skills are, can I make my eyes converge? Can I localize it? Can I bring the information in in a, in a way that's going to allow it to be processed without a lot of difficulty? And then in the more global way is that there's these processing centers that are not just linear, but that are integrated with all kinds of things in our body, in our minds, in our whole makeup. And we'll give examples of those. So color has local effects. It has non-local effects. Uh, it can, if we can give a red light, we can make your eyes turn outward. We can use a blue light and make your eyes turn inward. We can give different colors to balance your physiology. And all of your nervous system has to be in place to support your vision. Your vision has tremendous uh, autonomic nervous system input. And so you have to be physiologically balanced to, to, have, to utilize your visual system in an efficient way. Uh, the idea of kindling, that there are positive and negative uh, stimuli, and you can set off a cascade of events that Re, that bring your system out of balance in a sequential way from one small insult that can carry through your whole system. That your somatic body typing, your, your body is, is involved in all your vision and all your information processing. There are mirror neurons. You can look at something and your nervous system will immediately make neural connections to mimic what you're looking at. The, which gets to the whole point is the whole system is plastic. The whole system is, is pliable that all sensory, motor, emotional, reasoning, motivational neurons have total plasticity. And not only do they have plasticity, but they can be, they're, they're constantly evolving and they're changing all the time. So you're not set with one basic neurological set, your system is always evolving. And so this plasticity is especially sensitive to light and color. Uh, in photobiology, just briefly, uh, when they put color and light on, on direct chromophores, things that are absorbed in your body, like in the eye, the skin, the neurons, the blood, the stem cells, the muscles, all have color receptive uh, chromophores that absorb light. But these little, these events, of course, drive local biochemical reactions, which the photobiologists are now documenting, but it cascades through our whole system. Uh, energy models, we've been taught, we've been hearing at length about that, Alexander, uh, talked at length about all these things. The light travels throughout the whole living matrix. We have a crystalline geometry of the liquids and minerals in our body that act as waveguides of light that send energy and information to different fields that govern all kinds of biological activity. Trauma will embed dysfunctional patterns into the body, into the nervous system. And that's what we see with kids. They have trauma, most of them of some sort. And that trauma can be just falling and hitting their head. It can be having a series of ear infections, uh, high fevers, things like that, and emotional stress, upset in the family, divorce, separation, all kinds of things cause imbalances in the autonomic nervous system and uh, affect, set up dysfunctional patterns throughout the system. So, Spittler said that uh, his main contribution, I think he took a lot from Loeb, who took from Dinshaw, and I think Dinshaw took from Babbitt, and Babbitt went to India, as far as I know, and studied at length, studied Ayurvedic medicine from way back. So they all took from each other, but Spittler said, well, the main way that light affects us in terms of our vision and the, and the support of vision, of course, is through the eyes, and that um, he was the first one that talked a lot about that's the visible application of light that had the most power of all, he felt. And he wrote the Syntonic Principle in 1941. You saw a picture of him, Brian showed you this morning. Um, so he said energy, the balances, syntonic means to bring into balance the autonomic nervous system and the endocrine system. And these two systems, the hormones and the involuntary sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system support our vision and are absolutely essential for vision and information processing. 
It depends not only on our eyes, but it depends on the type of body type we have. Our constitution determines a lot how we take light in. That's a whole other field, a whole other idea. And that he said in his book, which I think everything in there he said in 1941 is completely true, that it, that it affects the eyes, the way it re they respond, it affects cell growth, tissue growth, as Alexander was showing us this morning, uh, physical de 